Okay, so let's move on to our next example. Now, let's just say... Example... 2. This is from the same book. Now, it says that we have a simple pendulum. Now, the length is equal to 0.75 meters. And we apparently initially displaced this pendulum by moving it horizontally a distance of 5.0 millimeters. And what we want to try and find is the maximum speed it has and the time at which it first reaches this maximum speed. We're, let's just call that T star. So you can pause this here, solve it on your own if you'd like. There's actually a couple ways you can actually solve this. You can do it by energy considerations. But the way I'm going to do it out is just by the equations of motion. So, for this system, we're going to get an equation of motion, something along the lines of theta, or displacement, as a function of time, is going to be equal to A cosine omega t plus B sine omega t. Now, if you recall from the mass and spring example, that this a term that's going to be that's going to be uh, in this case equal to our initial displacement. In this case, it's going to be our initial angular displacement. So let's just call this a term theta naught. That's what we initially displaced our angle. Now, this b term is going to be equal to our initial angular velocity that we gave it. But we didn't actually give it an initial angular velocity. So this b term will actually go to zero. So we're just working with just the cosine term. So now we have theta as a function of time and we want to try and get velocity. Well one thing we can try and do is we can try and figure out angular velocity. Which, oddly as it sounds, is just omega is t which is equal to the derivative of theta with respect to time, which in this case will be equal to omega times theta naught times sine omega t, and there's actually a minus sign there. Now I know it's a bit confusing with omega is our frequency is constant and omega is our angular speed, but let's just try and bear with that. So now we have angular speed and we want actual speed. They can actually be, re be related with the equation that v is equal to omega r. Well, I should say omega as a function of t times r. Essentially saying that our actual speed is equal to our angular velocity times our radius, which kind of makes sense if you look at it from the unit's point of view. Here we have meters per second, here we're going to have 1 over second, and here we're going to have meters. Which means that this v is a function of t term, that's going to be equal to our negative omega so, uh, theta naught times our radius times sine omega t. And we want v max and this minus sign, that's really there just to dictate direction since it's a one-dimensional system, so you can think of it as, we, I'll just take like the absolute value, we really don't need that minus sign. So we essentially want, uh, let's say, V is equal to omega theta naught R sine omega T. Now, here comes the fun part. Now we need to try and figure out what this initial angular displacement, theta naught is, and what our angular frequency, theta, uh, omega, is. So let's start off with this omega term. We know for a simple pendulum, omega is going to be equal to the square root of acceleration due to gravity over the length of the pendulum, which is going to be equal to 
Let's just plug in 9.8 meters per second squared for our acceleration due to gravity. And our length of the pendulum is 0.75 meters. So we can divide it out, the meters will cancel, and if you actually compute it out, you're going to get something along the lines of 3.6, and the units will be 1 over second. So that's our angular frequency, omega. So now let's try and figure out what this theta naught will be. So let's redraw like this region right here. Let's make it into a nice little triangle. Here, oops. Uh, here we have one side. Here's our pendulum. Uh, let's say about there. And here's our horizontal displacement. Now we know that this is going to be theta naught. This is our length of the pendulum, which is 0.75 meters, which is equal to 750 millimeters. And here is our horizontal displacement, which is 5 millimeters. So we know the opposite side, and we know the hypotenuse, so we can say that sine of theta naught is equal to opposite, which is 5 millimeters, divided by our hypotenuse of 750 millimeters. Notice our units are actually in, the, well, we have the right unit, so we're not actually dividing millimeters by meters and getting off by some factor. So now let's take the inverse sine, so we're going to get that theta naught is equal to the inverse sine, or the arc sine, of 5 divided by 750. And if you do it out, that comes out to be something like... Uh, let's say 0 0.00667 radians. And radians, as you call, is a dimensionless unit. So, now we know what our omega is, we know what our theta naught is, now we just need the radius, which is just actually the length of this pendulum. So we can say that the radius is just 0.75 meters. So, so here's our v as a function of time. And we know that this is, it has a sine component. And this is going to be a max when sine is at a maximum. So this is going to be a max when this is going to be equal to 1. So we can say that V max is going to be equal to omega times our theta naught times our length of the pendulum. And we can just plug in everything in. We get that omega, that was 3.6 times 1 over a second. We have our theta naught, which is 0 0.00667 radians, which are dimensionless, and our length of the pendulum, our L, which is 0.75 meters. 0.75 meters. We can multiply all that out together, and we're going to get that, oops, that the maximum velocity is going to be equal to roughly 0 0.018 meters per second. So we've solved the first part. We found what the maximum velocity is. Now we just need to figure out what the time is when it reaches that maximum velocity. So let's draw out what this velocity as a function of time will look like. It's a sine function. So let's just say here's time. Here's our velocity. So it's a sine function, so we'll start at 0, then go up to 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, up to 0. And this is one complete oscillation, and the time up to this point is given by one period. And we know that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by our omega. But we're interested at the point where it reaches the first maximum, which is this point right here. So if this is half the period, this is going to be, this point right here, that's going to be a quarter of the full period. 
So we can say that the time it reaches to the maximum is going to be one quarter the period, which is equal to one quarter times two pi over omega, which is the same as pi times, sorry, divided by two omega. And we can plug in the value of our omega, which was uh, 3.6 hertz, and we'll get that the time it takes to reach that maximum is, say, pi oh, 2 times 3.6, 1 over seconds. It's going to come out to be something like 0 0.43 seconds. So there we have it. We're able to figure out the maximum velocity and the, maxim and the time it takes to reach that just by the our equations of motion. And like I said, you can, it's possible to do this out through the energy considerations, and you'll hopefully, if you do it that way, you'll hopefully try and get, you'll hopefully get the same answers. So let's carry on with some more examples in the next video.